Okay, so welcome back to this next video on uh, A kinase anchoring proteins. So we've seen uh, how protein kinase A2 is this enzyme which is free within the cytoplasm, and how that means that when cyclic AMP goes up and uh, activates, well, and inactivates the regulatory subunits so that they dissociate from the catalytic subunits. But that activates the catalytic subunits because they were being suppressed by the regulatory subunits. How these catalytic subunits can go and activate, a, or, well, go and have an effect on a huge number of different proteins. So the specificity is quite low in this case. Now what we're going to have a look at is protein kinase A2. Okay, so protein kinase A2 is the topic for the next video. Right, and this is basically um, another protein kinase A, uh, but this time the regulatory subunit is slightly different, and in this case the regulatory subunit will actually be bound to a target, basically. So let me show you. So if we have another cell here, let's say we've got another cell here. Okay, right. Uh, so uh, what, what you can end up with now is another protein kinase A, so I'll draw our protein kinase A in here. So here's our regulatory subunit this time, and this is now the R2 regulatory subunit. So this is the regulatory subunit of protein kinase A, and it's specifically the R2 regulatory subunit. So there we have the dimer of these R2 subunits. So this is R2. Right, and again you have these catalytic subunits here, so these are the catalytic subunits and now what you're going to have is these these are this dimer of r2s is going to be bound to another protein here so this protein is very important so i'll color it in okay so here we have you can see i've drawn it bound to both of the regulatory subunits but it's bound to this one and this one it's bound to both of them and basically in the case of the r2 uh, regulatory subunit of protein kinase A, it will have a domain that is ideal for this protein to bind to. And this, finally, is an A kinase anchoring protein. So this is an A kinase anchoring protein. And often people don't want to write that fully out when they label diagrams, so instead they use its initials, ACAP. So, or ACAP for short, A kinase anchoring protein. So basically it binds to the regulatory subunit of the um, protein kinase A and it holds it down basically. And this will then be bound to some other target at the other end. Uh, for instance, it's often bound to something in the uh, phospholipid bile there. So that's why I've drawn it close to the membrane here. So it will have some portion that then binds it to a target domain. So this, this bit down here will be the targeting domain which is going to um, bind to something else that you want this protein kinase A uh, to be near. So this is the targeting domain. Okay, right. Uh, now, another important thing is that you will also have sort of bound in this position down here, maybe, also to the protein kinase A, uh, sorry, to the A cat, rather. You'll also have bound, potentially, a substrate for this catalytic subunit here. So this here might be a substrate for this catalytic subunit. So let's have, in fact, let's colour it in a colour. So this pink protein here and this pink protein here, these might be substrates for the catalytic subunit of the protein kinase A, so substrates. And basically the idea is that when cyclic AMP goes up in the cell, so here comes our cyclic AMP, what's going to happen is that cyclic AMP is going to bind to these four cyclic AMP binding domains on this protein. That's going to cause a change in conformation. So let's draw what's going to happen. Now we're going to have to draw it. Um, where where should we draw it? We could draw it upside down, I suppose. But um, we'll draw it. We'll draw another membrane over here and show what's going to happen to it. Okay. So basically, what happens is a similar change in conformation in these R2 subunits. So I'll draw this again. So here's the change in conformation in the R2 subunit. So there's one R2 subunit, and as you can see, I've drawn them unfolding basically. And there's the second R2 subunit. So these are R2 subunits in a dimer. And then they've got cyclic AMP bound to them, which is what has caused this conformational change. Now, they are still bound, basically, to uh, the A cap. Okay, so they're bound to the uh, A kinase anchoring protein, which still has its targeting domain in here. So here's the A cap. 
So this is this green protein here. Right, okay. Uh, a cap still there. And basically the adenomal, uh, sorry, the A kinase anchoring protein is still bound to this substrate. So here's our substrate, this pink protein here. And basically what happens is that the catalytic subunits now stay in the neighborhood of this um, of this complex. So even though they've been released by the R2 subunits, they stay in the neighborhood. So here's the catalytic subunit here. They remain trapped in here. And basically what they oh pretty much all they do is then phosphorylate this substrate that is nearby them basically. So they'll add a phosphate group onto here. They'll add phosphate groups onto the serine and threonine residues in that substrate and then they'll have some effect on that specific substrate for the protein kinase A. Okay, uh, so this means that you can have much, much more specific actions, i.e. when the cyclic AMP goes up, you specifically activate this effector, and not just any old effector, as in the case of protein kinase A1s. So protein kinase A2s have a much, much more specific um, specific role, basically. They activate a specific effector which is in this um, complex with them, basically. And the structure which basically holds this whole complex together is this A kinase anchoring protein.